So before we explicitly define that operation, let's first find the energy of this ground state wave function. So to do so, we would of course just apply the Hamiltonian to our ground state wave function, and what we're going to get is the energy times the ground state wave function. So let's do this explicitly. I'm going to write in the Hamiltonian, negative h bar squared over 2m, d squared by dx squared, plus 1 half m omega squared x squared. All that is going to be multiplied by my ground state wave function, which we just solved a second ago, m omega over pi h bar, raised to the power of a quarter, e to the negative m omega divided by 2 h bar times x squared. And that's going to be equal to e times my ground state wave function. And in this case, I don't need to substitute it in on the right-hand side because it won't serve us any purpose throughout this derivation, so I'll leave it explicitly as psi naught to save myself some trouble. My next step, though, is going to be multiplying through my wave function psi naught into the Hamiltonian. And so what I'm going to get is m omega pi h bar raised to the power of 1 quarter times negative h bar squared over 2m. I'm going to get d squared by dx squared times e to the negative m omega over 2 h bar x squared. To that I'm going to be adding 1 half m omega squared x squared m omega over pi h bar raised to the power of a quarter e to the negative m omega over 2 h bar times x squared and that's still equal to e times psi naught. Well, this term right here on the left-hand side, this m omega raised to the power of a quarter divided by pi h bar raised to the power of a quarter times e raised to the negative m omega over 2 h bar times x squared. Well, that still is, of course, psi naught. And I can write that in, or I can write that back in explicitly simply because there's nothing, there's no other operation that's being done to it. Over here, though, I can't write that in because this I have the differential operator happening. I have the d by dx all squared um, being applied to e to the negative m omega divided by 2 h bar times x squared. And so I can't write that back in explicitly. I have to actually do that differential. So I'm going to do both those things on this next step. m omega over pi h bar raised to the power of a quarter times negative h bar squared over 2m. Well, I'll apply the differential operator once, and so what that means is that I get the function back to me because it is an exponential, negative m omega over 2h bar times x squared, and I get the derivative of the inner function. So the derivative of the inner function is negative m omega over 2h bar times 2x. And to that, I'm going to be adding on m omega squared x squared over 2 times psi naught and that's equal to e times psi naught. And so in this case I can pull out a bunch of constants and I can apply this differential operator again. First thing of course is I can cancel out those twos. And what I'm going to get is m omega over pi h bar raised to the power of a quarter negative h bar squared over 2m. I'm going to get another negative m omega over h bar, and I'm going to get d by dx of x times e to the negative m omega over 2 h bar times x squared. Still going to add m omega squared x squared over 2 times psi naught, and that's equal to e times psi naught. And of course recall here in this previous line I have the this x that comes out of the derivative of the inner function, and that's why I have an x that appears here still inside this differential. That means I have to now do the product rule on that term. First I'm going to start crossing off common variables over here. I've got an m on the bottom and an m on top. I have an h bar squared on top and I have an h bar on the bottom. So that means for my next line I'm going to get m omega over pi h bar raised to the power of a quarter. I have minus times minus which is a plus, so I get h bar omega over 2, and now I have the derivative of 
x times e to the negative m omega over 2h bar x squared. So I'll apply the product rule to that. First times the derivative of the second, x times the derivative of that, I get back the function itself since it's an exponential, e raised to the power of negative m omega over 2h bar x squared times the derivative of the inner function, negative m omega over 2h bar times 2x. And to that I'm going to be adding the second times the derivative of the first. The derivative of x is 1, so I get e to the negative m omega over 2h bar x squared. And to that I'm going to be adding on m omega squared x squared over 2 times psi naught is equal to e times psi naught. All right, so now let's distribute in all these terms on the left-hand side. Let's simplify. Let's find out what our ground state energy is. So this left-hand term is going to be m omega over pi h bar 1 quarter. I'm going to have an h bar omega over 2. I'm going to have a negative m omega over h bar. And I'm going to have an x squared e to the negative m omega over 2h bar x squared. I'm also going to have plus m omega over pi h bar raised to the power of a quarter. I still have an h bar omega over 2 and I'm going to get an e to the negative m omega over 2 h bar x squared. To that I'm going to add m omega squared x squared over 2 times psi naught is equal to e times psi naught. Let's cancel out some terms. I have an h bar on top, I have an h bar on bottom. That means my left hand term here is going to be minus m omega squared x squared all divided by 2 and I have m omega over pi h bar raised to the power of a quarter e to the negative m omega over 2 h bar x squared. I'm still going to carry forward and I'll write the h bar over 2 h bar omega over 2 first m omega over pi h bar raised to the power of a quarter e to the negative m omega over 2 h bar times x squared plus m omega squared x squared over 2 times psi naught is equal to e times psi naught. Well here I've got these terms again this m omega over pi h bar raised to the power of a quarter times e to the negative m omega divided by 2 h bar x squared. Well, in both those cases, that's just psi naught again. So I'm going to explicitly write that in. Minus m, sorry, let's make sure that that's in black. Minus m omega squared x squared over 2 times psi naught plus h bar omega over 2 times psi naught plus m omega squared x squared over 2 times psi naught is equal to e times psi naught. Well now I have these two terms which are now identical. I have negative m omega squared x squared over 2 times psi naught plus m omega squared x squared over 2 times psi naught. And so those two terms go away. And so what I'm left with is h bar omega over 2 times psi naught is equal to e times psi naught. And so what this implies is that the ground state energy is equal to h bar omega over 2, meaning that this is the lowest possible energy that can be found for the simple harmonic oscillator. To summarize what we just did, we solved the first order differential equation to get the ground state wave function. We normalized it and determined the ground state energy by applying the Hamiltonian. If we want to determine any of the excited wave functions, we simply have to apply the raising operator a plus to the ground state wave function psi naught, and then normalize the result. Recall that after the raising operator is applied to a wave function for this system, the energy is increased by h bar omega. 
Given that the ground state energy is 1 half h bar omega, then the first excited state will be 3 halves h bar omega. The second excited state will be 5 halves h bar omega, and so on. In general, the nth excited state is given by n plus 1 half times h bar omega. For example, to find the first excited state, apply the raising operator to psi naught. Normalizing results in a1 being equal to 1. So the final result is m times omega divided by pi times h bar, all raised to the power of 1 quarter, times 2m omega divided by h bar, raised to the power of 1 half, times x times e to the negative m omega divided by 2h bar, times x squared. Here is a graphical representation of the first five states in the harmonic oscillator. Notice that we only had to solve this in one region because the same potential, the harmonic oscillator potential, exists at all x. Therefore, there is only one region, and the bounds for the integrals are always from minus infinity to positive infinity.